Hello, everyone. On August 12th, we are going to have a Sun Chiron fire trine. Fire is the element of transformation, also, of course, of inspiration and insight and, and um, all kinds of uh, um, positive uh, transformation energies. And the trine is always a blessing. Chiron denotes our karmic wounds. Anything that happened to us in the past and we have been unable to process it, usually becomes a wound. And then when the wound is not being treated, uh, it could fester, it could actually become worse, it could turn into all sorts of phobias. And and uh, and uh, after a while, it becomes totally non-negotiable, let's put it this way. Uh, so uh, whenever we have a sun chiron trine, uh, there is a potential to, to uh, either rectify it or heal it or just let it go because whenever there's a trine uh, there's always a blessing in the process let's take a look at the um, um, chart for london as you can see this is going to occur on august the 12th at uh, 17 uh sorry 1907 so this is seven uh 7 p.m. in London time. We have a Capricorn rising, and there are some features uh, uh, in the chart. I did not highlight the uh, uh, Uranus midpoint with Chi with Jupiter and uh, Sedna because it, it was, has been there for a while, but it's still quite tight. So the three celestial objects are kind of moving almost together. So you can still utilize uh, the Uranus midpoint uh, with Jupiter and Sedna. Sedna denotes creation through dissection and Jupiter enlarges everything it touches. So it, there's going to be this big change. Saturn is, is of course the, uh, the chart ruler, which is retrograde at the moment in Pisces in the first house. And uh, the other highlights in the chart is that the fact that Uranus is on the, the IC, so there might be some disruption in the home sphere. Uh, there's uh, this triple conjunction, but separating of Pallas Athena, Mercury, Mars. Um, Mercury just left Pallas Athena, but the, the conjunction is still tight. Pallas Athena is wisdom and, and uh, Mer Mercury is everyday discourse, communication. And soon uh, Mercury will be conjunct Mars. Actually, by, by the uh, Leo new moon, they're going to be conjunct. And um, Venus is still retrograde. Uh, the Venus um, sun exact conjunction is occurring on the on the 13th i'm not going to to do a separate video on it because <clears throat> it's going to be almost the same but as you can see the liliths are very prominent because dark moon lit the, the acceptance of the curse and black moon lit stamina um uh courage uh and uh, endurance and also clairvoyance are kind of um putting the sun venus in a bracket and it's actually it is a midpoint structure as well not not very punctual not very exact but still uh, if we allow the for the sun a bigger orb it's it's it is a, actually a midpoint structure but it is also a full forward conjunction and the vesta australia conjunction is still uh, very tight it will be within or, or uh, until november so you can still focus on karma breaking and destiny changing, that is going to be a, an important um, um, feature in this particular chart. And the Aries uh, North Node conjunction is applying. So again, this is something that is going to be very important in the next couple of weeks. And uh, here is uh, a Harmony Triangle and a Little Engine. Um, as the, one of the main features of this chart. Actually, uh, as I said, the Astrea Vesta conjunction simply means that you can now focus on karma breaking, but it's, it is linked to Chiron. And Chiron in Aries denotes all sorts of karmic wounds that are linked to uh, violence, aggression, wars, all sorts of uh, occurrences linked to blood and fire and, and uh, aggression. And the Sun-Venus conjunction is beautiful, of course. The problem here is that Venus is still retrograde. And as you can see, uh, the Sun-Chiron trine is a bidirectional trine, which means that it is there, but it it, it is uh, 
not manifesting clearly or uh, so when you have a, uh, a trine, uh, the uh, one of the past participants of which is retrograde, then the trine is not actually, it could be very tight, but it's, it takes time for it to manifest. And with the Venus Chiron trine, the problem is that both both uh, are retrograde, so everything is, is, is uh, magnetic, everything is turned inside. Do the whole my master called uh, Venus Chiron aspects love hurts? And of course, this is a trine, so it could actually mean that love is a healing potential. And the key is here, the healing potential, because this is a trine. So yeah, both are retrograde, so it will manifest uh, slower or not as prominently as it should. But the sun is actually highlighting both, um, uh, both um, celestial objects. And in this way, um, so the, 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 it could be a very potent trine, but at the same time, it could be a little bit uh, slow in manifestation. And the uh, the fact that it is creating a, a, a harmony triangle is important. At the same time, Mars is squaring the Vesta Astrea conjunction. It is a mutable square. And this Mars is ruling Chiron, uh, making also a quincunx with it. And uh, this is this is the problem. I just read uh, in an article that uh, in the Ukrainian war, just in the last couple of weeks, 45,000 people died. And there is an enormous amount of soldiers who lost uh, one of their limbs. Uh, and actually, uh, the loss of limbs is, uh, is uh, uh, nearing the same amount as it was in the Second World War or First World War, I don't even, uh, in the World War, which is which is horrible, which is really, I mean, this is such a genocide. I need to use this word because uh, you really, the United States wants to fight this war until the last Ukrainian. And uh, the Ukrainians are bleeding to death and their best people, their youngest, uh, most potent uh, people, most potent sons are bleeding to death. And this is horrendous. And that's exactly this Mars Chiron uh, square, uh, uh, Quincunx. Although the little engine gives you potential, how to focus on karma breaking and destiny changing. This is what could actually uh, resolve the issue and provide the healing energy of the, uh, the Sun Chiron trine. Uh, until, unfortunately, you guys, you, uh, my dear American uh, um, friends, uh, until you have idiots who are leading your country, unfortunately, this is not going to happen. Uh, as I said in my previous video, just the other day, I heard uh, your um, Secretary of State say that an atomic war is not worse than climate change. How idiotic do you have to be to say that? And uh, all we need, we should do really is put Anthony Blinken into a, a, a bunker and let him try both uh, and then decide what he chooses. It's, it's idiotic, really. Anyhow, so here are the transcendental celestial objects. On Mars, we have Adonis, the beauty, the, uh, the beautiful youth who is actually, uh, um, I think this represents the youth of Ukraine really, who is losing, who are losing either their limbs or uh, their lives in this war. On the Sun Venus, you have Rhea, Veritas, Victoria, and Urania. Veritas is truth, Victoria is victory, Urania is the stars, and Rhea is a, um, a goddess of, uh, you know, she is the, uh, the wife of, of Kronos. And uh, on Vesta, you have Alchira. Um, this is actually a um, um, a, a centaur, and uh, uh, it has been there and will be there for quite a while uh, with Vesta. And this is an, um, a creator god of uh, the um, of uh, the New Zealand people. Alkira created the whole world, and then uh, after creation, he went to the edge of his own creation and never looked back and didn't want to um, to operate it. And um, Alkira here means that. Please concentrate on what you can't or you won't uh, operate and simply let it be. So sometimes we create all kinds of things. Sometimes we put energy and effort into projects. And sometimes it's not worth 
making them move. That's something that we need to come to uh, grips with. On uh, uh, Australia, we have Darius, Tisiphone, and Rigel. Rigel or Rigel is uh, one of the stars of uh, Orion. It's the uh, the foot of of the Pharaoh, who is actually paying attention to his uh, people and also teaching them and protecting them. And uh, Darius, of course, is uh, riches, and Tisiphone is uh, the goddess of revenge, and. Uh, Australia is karma breaking. So don't put any energy in revenge. It's negative energy. Uh, don't, you know, there's a saying, the best revenge is to live well. Concentrate on that. Don't put energy, don't feed it. Think about your own riches, Darius. Think about what you have and be happy with it and, and rule it and, and uh, with Rigel uh, be on top of it. On Chiron, we have Lucifer. And Lucifer uh, is a funny little item. He, of course, is the devil, Satan, and he is constantly questioning uh, uh, God and his creation. God is, of course, omnipotent and, and perfect, but his creation isn't. And Lucifer has a function of highlighting what is not actually uh, perfect and what we could actually uh, better. Lucifer means bringer of light, so it actually, actually puts into the limelight, into the forefront of interest whatever is not potentially working well and whatever causes us karmic wounds, Chiron. And we have a double karmic cage. Now the portion with Pluto and the nodal axis has been that has been there for like a month now and it's still within orb. But Juno is uh, linking into them and creating the whole into like a um uh, cardinal double uh, karmic cage. Juno, of course, is um, the first lady. She is uh, Jupiter's wife. So she is the uh, the queen of heaven, the mother of gods. It's a very potent archetype. Uh, and Juno usually in, in normal charts uh, denotes um, committed relationships, serious committed relationships. And in mundane charts, it uh, describes liaisons, covenants, contracts, pacts. And now it is opposite Pluto. And yes, you just heard uh, in the news that they are starting to have some sort of talks about, uh, about of course, um, uh, peace talks. It's not yet materializing, but they, they finally realized, you know, after, after, after saying so many times uh, in the uh, in this early spring that now the Ukrainians are going to launch a huge counterattack, a huge counter offense and, and whatever. And it never happened. It simply never happened. And they are dying in their thousands and they are mutilated in their thousands. Hopefully the West is actually looking at the issue and realizing that we should not put any more energy and money and effort into this, and they should make peace. But of course, this is a double karmic cage. It also means that uh, Pluto is, of course, always uh, the lord of the underworld. It means the, the powers that be, the plutocracy, uh, the, the, the people who run the world and are they don't really care. They don't care for us. They just want their own power and money. These are horrible people, horrible people. And uh, Juno opposite Pluto simply means that there's not too much chance to come to grips with this. Uh, and also um, um, the, the North Node uh, ha has just moved into Aries and will be there for another, uh, another one and a half years approximately. And now our task is to learn to fight for ourselves, for our own individual urges and wishes and wills and whatever you need. And my dear uh, liberal fellow man, no, don't tell me what to eat. Don't tell me what to drive. Don't tell me how to live. Uh, this 15 minute city is, is being implemented in many, many places in, uh, uh, throughout Europe. And now they are starting to talk about a five minute city. Uh, and you know what? I don't want to live in a five minute city. I want to live in my own house that I own, that I bought, that I, I um, refurbished, that I put energy and effort into. And I want to live my own life the way I wish to. And I want to live with the consequences. You can't tell me what to do and I won't allow you to do it. That's something that we need to learn uh, in the, the upcoming months and one and a half years. 
And then here are the transcendental celestial objects. Pluto is still conjunct Orius and Amicus. Orius still denotes mitigated consequences, mitigated punishment. This is exactly what you see. It's simply ridiculous. It just if you look at the Biden family versus Trump, I'm not a Trump fan. I don't care. It's you, you uh, in, in the United States who should decide who you choose. And uh, all I know is that when Trump was in power, we had a much better relationship with the United States. Uh, at the moment, it is very disruptive. Uh, we have a horrible uh, 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 <laughs> vogue um, uh, ambassador who doesn't deal with his own real tasks, but tries to, to punish us everywhere he can. He's an idiot. Uh, the other idiot, uh, of course, is your uh, uh, your your um, I don't even want to say this because I don't want to hurt you. It's but it, to see from the outside what happened, what is happening to the United States is so sad. And on the one hand, it's very sad, and on the other hand, it's ridiculous. And that's exactly what Aureus means on Pluto and Pluto Presse. And of course, Amicus means I don't care what is sacred, I don't care with the consequences, I will win. On the North Node, we have Shiva. She's the uh, Slavonic uh, love goddess, Heracles, the hero. Homerus, who was, uh, of course, a um, Greek uh, ancient writer. The Odyssey and the Iliad are two of his, um, his works. But there's a very interesting theory uh, that the Renaissance never had any actual um, literary work. They produced a lot of... Uh, uh, buildings and and sculpture sculptures and and paintings so uh visual arts were very prominent but not literature and there is a theory that for instance the works of homerus were written during that period and then put back into antiquity as such i don't know but homerus uh, on the north node simply means that learn from history and of course under the galaxy we discussed this many many times it's a Portal, dimension portal. On the south node, we have Agnaton, uh, Putia, uh, uh, Scutia, Narcissus, Danubia, and Elatus. Uh, Danubia and Scutia belong to us Hungarians very deeply, our past. And yes, we can learn from the past. And yes, we need to learn from the past. P Putia describes clairvoyance. Agnaton describes a new era with new gods. Narcissus means uh, learn to love yourself and go back to a point where you still love yourself. And Alatus means uh, uh, self-worth through writing and creating endeavors. And on Juno, you have Apophis and Helena. And of course, Helena is the trigger of the Trojan War. So uh, Juno here represents covenants and, and uh, pacts. And Helena is the, the triggering point. And Apophis is uh, the snake that swallows uh, uh, the, the sun in the um, uh, Egyptian underworld, denoting some kind of disaster, some sort of uh, natural disaster, but of course it could be man-made disaster as well. So this is the uh, the Chiron sun uh, uh, fire trine, and uh, the energy provides you with healing, but also with things to consider and things to decide. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.